Guys, Dingo here. You here for a really special episode today. I get comments on all of our videos and I really appreciate them. But every now and again, when it's particularly when I'm filming with the Black Mamba, my mates from Australia come out and say, Black Mamba's not the most dangerous snake because I've said that once or twice. The Inland Taipan is, or the Eastern Brown, or some of these Australian snakes. So today, do you know what our video is all about? It's about that. Why is the Black Mamba the most dangerous snake in the world, in my opinion, and a lot of other professionals out there? So we're going to be looking at five different factors where we're talking about the Black Mamba versus the world's most venomous snake, the Inland Taipan. What we're going to do to start us off is I'm going to take a Black Mamba out now. I'm going to show you a whole bunch of them this morning, and we're going to go talk through these various points. So today we're looking at five different factors that are going to determine which of these snakes are the most dangerous in the world. It's a really cool day. It's about 16 degrees Celsius. It's cold. These snakes should be relaxed. They should be slow and it's been sleeping inside of its little box here, inside its enclosure. So let me open up the first black mamba before I start telling you about these five factors. Woo! That's about all we're going to open it. Let me see if the snake wants to come out on its own or not. Here we go. Look at that, guys. Right. Now, this black moment, I remember I said, cold day. And you can see, as it came out of the box, woohoo! Look at that, it's gone a bit wild. Now, this snake, the first reason I say black mambas are the most dangerous snakes in the world is simply because of their size. Now this here is only probably a five-year-old snake, and it's well over, it's too dangerous now to pick it up, it's well over about 2.5 meters. And look at it twisting there as well, just get away from me. And this is only about half grown, in fact, the record black mamba is four and a half meters long. Whew, look at that. It's four and a half meters long, the record black mamba. You can hear I'm right out of breath here. Because the snake is so agile, it's moving around, head up off the ground. Now, although most black mambas don't get to four and a half meters, when you come here across a three meter snake that's deadly, the thing that makes it so dangerous is that a snake that's longer can come back on itself a lot easier than a shorter snake. So when you're talking a tarpan in particular, you're looking at a snake that's probably 1.8 meters in length, whereas a snake like this has got the speed and the length to come right back on itself. You see as I'm holding it here on the hook, look at that. They're excellent climbers. And what it'll do, it can climb right back up on this, this hook stick that I've got your mouth open looking at me. And that's one of the reasons these black mambas are so dangerous. It's this big length. In fact, they're the second biggest venomous snake in the world, right after the King Cobra. So they're getting to lengths two or almost three times the size of a tarpan. Now, for those of you who don't handle snakes, you might think, what's length got to do with it, Dingo? It's got everything to do with it. When you've got a long snake like this, calm down a bit now, coming right back wanting to hit us. Really important. So the longer the snake, the further it can come. Right guys, now as you can see, the snake's calmed down a bit there, but look at that tongue flicking. And that's what they do, smell in the air, tongue flicking. Now the problem with a really big snake, like a black mamba, and why it's more dangerous when it comes to size than something like a tarpan, is this extra length just allows the snake to propel itself further. So for a mamba to strike, it's not moving maybe 30 or 40 centimeters. It's moving a percentage of its body. And because it's a longer body, the snake's moving a meter or so in a strike. That's what makes him incredible. The second thing I want to tell you, look at that. As I touch that, it'll flick towards the camera probably. Let me see if it wants to move towards the camera. Come on. Whoa, there you can see the hood from your side there, guys. And that snake's eyeing me out now. 
Now it's gone into strike mode. Look how it's getting up. And some of your Australian snakes also have a slight hood, not nearly as nice as the cobras or these mambas, but look at that. And you can see we're going to be talking about their demeanor a little bit later. But this black mamba's not scared of me. In fact, he's coming right at me. Just hang on. Uh oh, all right, just wait, just wait, just wait. All right, guys. So the first factor we're looking at is size of the snake. And with a massive record of 4.5 meters and an average size of almost three meters, the black mamba that does the top pan on every single front. The next factor we're looking at is the speed of the snakes. And it might be very obvious, but we're gonna grab out another black mamba now just to show you how quick these snakes can be. Guys, right, the second attribute we look at is the speed of the snake. Now there's one snake in the world that when you talk about speed, everyone knows what you're talking about, and that's the black mamba. Now even though it's a cold day today, the snakes aren't warm, I wanna show you a little bit of the speed. Now speed is one of the most important factors when determining which is the most dangerous snake in the world. Black mambas can move up to 16 kilometers an hour, that's 10 miles an hour, and they are fast in the water, they fast through the bushes, they fast through everything. In fact, they often occur in sugarcane fields because they love eating big rodents. And when the sugarcane gets burnt every year, the black mambas come out of the sugarcane on top of it. So you're looking at two meters tall, coming right out of that sugarcane, they're 10 foot off the ground, heads raised, moving out of there. They're really, really quick snakes and completely different to a taipan. Let me take out our next snake here. This one's still sleeping, which is great. Let's see if it's gonna wake up. Come on. This is a big female. There we go. And that's the speed I'm talking about. Look at that. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And this is a cold black mama that's been sleeping, guys. And what I'm actually doing now, I'm trying to wear it out a little bit without getting bitten. Look how quickly it moves through this bush. All right, all right, all right, all right. Open up the wrong box first there. Such a quick snake. Really difficult to work with because of that speed. Should we bring it around here? Ah! Woo! Alright, just relax. Just relax. Woo! Yeah, guys. Snake getting right up there, trying to bite me. Off on the move again. The quickest snake in the world. And that's one of the things that makes this snake so dangerous. Now while the snake is here, let me just move it into the middle of the grass here. While the snake is out, let's talk about not only its speed, but the most important factor. When we, forgive me, I'm right out of breath here. Just relax. The most important factor when it comes to danger with these snakes. And what makes him, in my opinion, the most dangerous snake in the world is their personality and their demeanor. Look at that. Standing right off of me now. <laughs> These snakes, they're not scared of people. They're really defensive and they'll bite and they'll envenomate every single time. They're not relaxed snakes. They're not the kind of snakes that make good pets. In fact, the only reason the snake stopped moving now is because it's getting a little bit tired. But as you can hear, I'm getting even more tired. And it's encounters like this that bring out the best in your handling and you have to be 100% on focus. Look at that. Busier than a one-armed bricklayer in Baghdad running around you after the snake. Look at that. All right, it's okay. And it's the temperament that, that place these snakes all on their own. You just relax. Look at that little lunge towards me there. Really quick snake. Look at that. Edging up on me. Now snakes, when they've got space like this, should move away from people. Shouldn't move towards us. It's an aggressive snake. Some people have said, oh, haven't met an aggressive mamba. My friends, you haven't dealt with enough mambas. 
They're known to have cranky personalities. And I want to remind you, this is not a wild snake. This is a snake from my collection. Grew up in captivity. It's not a wild snake. And yet it means business. It wants to bite, it wants to envenomate. And when we're comparing to the inland tarpan, yes, the tarpan is a very dangerous snake. I'm not trying to underplay that. But the tarpan is a lot slower, number one. Secondly, it's not a snake that just wants to bite. The coastal tarpan is a little bit more stressed out and a little bit more feisty. But guys, there's no snake I know in the world that will come after people like this snake and you just saw it doing there, lunging off the ground trying to bite me. Look at it, still coming towards me. Let's see if I come around here what it's going to do. Come on. Look at that hood there guys. Now if I touch the snake over here, it's going to swing around want to bite. Touch the snake this side here, swing around this side want to bite. And the other issue with these snakes, they won't just bite you once, they'll bite you a whole bunch of times. Magnificent, magnificent snakes. And now while we're talking bites and toxicity of venom, yes, the tarpan, the inland tarpan is the world's most lethal or toxic snake when we're looking at venom. Absolutely no question about it. So people say, well, how venomous is the black mamba? Well, a lot of people have differing opinions about this. Some people have the impression that the black mamba is not even in the top 10. That's incorrect. In fact, the black mamba is about the fifth most toxic venom in the world. The fifth most toxic snake. But what does that really mean for most of us? It actually means very little. It's like someone saying, if you jump off a 100-story building or an 80-story building, which is going to kill you first? They're both going to kill you. So although the tarpan drop or drop has a more toxic venom than the black mamba, both are incredibly lethal. The other thing you've got to consider is that a black mamba will deliver three to four times more venom than a tarpan. So though drop will drop, the tarpan might be more toxic. This black mamba will inject two, three, four times more venom than the inland tarpan. The more venom in your system, the more toxic the bite, the greater chance you've got of dying. And when we're comparing the most dangerous snakes today, we're not talking about which one's you know, on the grass here and which one's gonna bite you, etc. We're talking about if you have to handle these snakes, if you're interacting with them, if you come across them in the bush, which snake has got the, the biggest likelihood of causing you serious medical complications or death? And then guys, the last factor we need to consider. So we've spoken about the size of the snake. We've spoken about its incredible speed. We've spoken about the toxicity of the venom. And the most important factor is the demeanor or the personality of the snake. The last thing though is the geographical location of these black mambas. I've got a lot of friends who are catching black mambas. Look at that. It's warming up again. Right, now, as I was saying, I've got friends in this area that catch and rescue these incredible snakes. And just within 10 kilometers of where I am today, at my residence, they catching up to 10 and rescuing up to 10 black mambas every single week from people's homes and their farms. And that's what makes this snake also so dangerous, is that they found in close proximity to humans. Now for those of you in America and some of the other countries that watch, I see some of your comments and you say, how irresponsible is it of parents or of people to allow these snakes into their homes? In Africa, this is a very common snake. And it's not actually difficult for a snake like this to come into your property they can climb really well they can go under things they can fit around doors it's just part of what living in africa is all about and that also adds to the the dangerous factor of these snakes there are people in africa who come home open up their car and they see a black mamba inside it it's been in engines it's been in taxis in bedrooms under beds you name it in kitchens these snakes will come in to feed off rodents and that adds to the danger factor is because people are interacting with these snakes all the time. They're really alert as you see there. I just went like this and the whole snake moved. So look here, as I move, look at the snake move. So guys, we've been considering five different factors that are integral in making the decision of what is the most dangerous snake in the world. Is the tarpan dangerous? Absolutely. Are some of the other Australian snakes dangerous? Absolutely. Are they very toxic and deadly? 100%. 
But when it comes to who is the biggest, who is the fastest, who has really toxic venom, who is the meanest, and who comes into contact with so many people, there can only be one winner, and that is the infamous Black Mamba. Thanks for joining us. Put your comments down below. Tell me what you think. Do you think the Black Mamba is the most dangerous snake in the world? I do. We'll see you next time. Dingo out. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the awesome videos coming up soon.